I now have the pleasure to introduce Karen and Danny Ellis from um, Australia, MENDED, that's the name of their lovely organization. And uh, there are retirees who are uh, an active duo volunteering to share their knowledge and experience uh, on the importance of refuse, reduce, reuse, and repair. And we just live across the Tasman Sea. And now this is a wonderful opportunity for us to connect today, which is so exciting. Really, I'm really looking forward, you know, to your presentation. Good. Yes, you are. So you, are you going to have a presentation or is, just, is it the two of you talking or how would you like to present? Yeah, it's just a Q&A from us, uh, Brigitte, and uh, anyone that's got any questions, we can certainly uh, introduce ourselves uh, a little bit more. And uh, we'd uh, love people to ask some questions and even some of those questions that were asked of you, uh, we can give an Aussie context to uh, some of the uh, questions that uh, Elias was, uh, was asking about electrical repair because we looked into that for the uh, Productivity Commission's right to repair inquiry in this mission that we did to that. So. We are a duo uh, that goes around and repairs at repair cafes, but that has considerably reduced uh, due to COVID. Uh, before COVID, we were looking at about 31 community repair events a year uh, since about two, 2015. Uh, we started on our mission uh, about 2012, and we uh, approached the local council to actually do something that you mentioned, Brigitte, to um, do a repair cafe at the local transfer station or recycling facility. So that was in 2012. And we were actually told no. <laughs> they weren't interested in that at that particular time. And we can sort of understand that a bit because we we're ahead of our time, really. Um, Martin Postman had just sort of, you know, in 2009 started Repair Cafe. So it was all brand new and uh, we weren't surprised we got a no, but we did uh, continue to advocate for community repair. And uh, around uh, 2015, we approached 2015, we approached our local health service to do a repair cafe um, in some community facilities. And that actually um, was, uh, was quite successful. We did that for about 18 months and uh, we, uh, we had uh, great success and uh, it, it was all going swimmingly well until the bureaucrats decided to step in and spoil the fun and uh, want us all to sign five page contracts. And they literally were five page volunteer contracts, Morning. employment contracts really. And uh, we said uh, no mm. to that. That wasn't in the spirit of neighborhood community repair. And uh, we weren't prepared to do that so that activity uh, stopped for us and that's when we hit the road um, as Mended Australia and started travelling around to other municipalities to their repair cafes and what we would do is we would just sign in and sign out and follow their OC health and safety procedures and that was really great fun until of course uh, the, the pandemic hit and uh, during that time, what was really good, we used that time to write submissions to the Productivity Commission's Right to Repair inquiry. And we did two submissions to that. And we also attended a hearing. And that was a bit of hard work because, you know, we're retired. We have 10 grandchildren and another life other than community repair and right to repair. And uh, during that time, Danny uh, was suffering with a back injury. And I think I got sick, not with COVID, but I got sick and it was all happening. And we were doing this right to repair uh, submission or these right to repair submissions. So 
but well worth it because we're passionate about repair and we push through it. And uh, it, it was really important during that time, not only to be campaigning for right to repair, but we did have an issue with electrical repair. And uh, the electrical repair was that we'd go to repair cafes and people would be saying, well, you're not electricians. How can you be repairing electrical items? And so I used that time uh, during the Productivity Commission submission to actually research what our various states uh, requirements were in relation to electrical repair. We knew that we weren't doing anything illegal in our state of Victoria, but we just wanted, like you, Brigitte, that official email saying yes or no and how to go about it uh, so we understand what you're doing at the moment. And what we found uh, for anyone that is uh, interested in Australia, that uh, all, all states um, except Queensland, in all states except Queensland, you can uh, do electrical repair without being a licensed uh, practicing electrician. And um, and Northern Territory, that's not a state, it's a territory, is the same as Queensland uh, with some, some differences, but uh, you can't uh, repair there without uh, being a licensed electrician. So what's really great is that uh, um, providing you competent and many of our uh, repairers at repair cafes are quite competent. They've, like Danny, had an electrical uh, background. Uh, he might not be an electrician as such, but he's worked um, uh, as, uh, as an electrician's assistant uh, for many years and uh, has done a lot of electrical work at home for, for many years. So he's quite competent and we find that uh, there are repairers uh, in our communities that have had similar experiences uh, uh, with electricity. And that's basically uh, it uh, for Mended Australia. I'm privileged enough to be on the Australian Repair Network uh, as a member of the steering committee, which is such an honour, such a privilege, because our work goes further than just going to repair cafes. Um, we uh, are an ac activist for repair and campaigners for repair, and uh, we support the, uh, the right to repair uh, by being on that, the Australian Repair Network, which launched uh, this year at the Australian Repair Summit, the, which you presented at Brigitte, which was wonderful. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, that's our second year of being involved in organising that summit along with Professor Leanne Wiseman, who is in Brussels at the moment, representing Australia uh, and our Trans-Tasman partnership, no doubt she'll be representing New Zealand as well. So that's, uh, that's Danny and myself. Danny, do you want to say anything that I might have missed? Oh yeah, I'll just clarify with, um... When Karen's talking about electrical, we're talking about appliances with a plug, not uh, not hard wiring or anything like that. So uh, anything that anything with a plug that people might come in, a lamp, toaster, kettle, whatever the case may be, yeah, in most states in Australia, if you deem yourself competent, you basically there's nothing to stop you um, pulling it apart and trying to fix it. Because a lot of times it is really a mechanical issue, like a a little uh, plunger not hitting a switch or a gear's broken or something like that, and you basically got to um, dismantle the the machine to get into it. So uh, just because it's got a plug on the end doesn't mean that it's going to um, cause you any issues. It's only when you plug it in that it, that you'll know that oh, it hasn't worked or it does work. So uh, for me, it is a, um, a work in progress because you're always learning, as um, most fixers will probably say, and uh, it's really good. 
it's a really good um, thing to do in retirement to pursue. I think the um, the fixing, but also the awareness. We we like to create. Karen and I like to create the awareness that, and bring people along with us and educate them that you know just don't throw it away. You it's you can maybe attempt to repair or find someone that could do that, and um, that's part of our goal is to make people aware that it's um, it's their problem too. I think just not the people here today, but it's the whole community that can help move along and get the right to repair happening. Yeah, and so we have what we call Mended Australia is our legacy project in retirement. We do want to leave a legacy that we've done something valuable with our time and we share the passion for repair. I share the passion passion. Um, I like to mend textiles um, and uh, troubleshoot sewing machine issues. Uh, Danny does electrical, mechanical. We've both grown up in that environment. So it's a really good uh, project that we can do together. And we would encourage other retirees to, if they are fixers, to do this type of thing together. Yes, and I also learnt a lot about sewing machines in the last four years <laughs> <laughs> from someone. But also, too, um, we're trying to get um, young people involved too. I think that's I think that's one really important fact that we've got to bring in, you know, the next generation and generation after that, get them on board and get them to understand that it's um, very important that we. Sorry, we're not really computer literate and Zoom literate, so we don't know how to stop this blurry uh, background. It's like a Doris Day lens. It's hiding my wrinkles, isn't it? <laughs> Masking my wrinkles. <laughs> oh, gosh. De maybe stay Danny together. can just stay together. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so any questions from, from anybody? Um, insurance. Insurance here, Brigitte, is, uh, is an issue. Elias was asking about insurance. Uh, the uh, repair cafes and uh, community repair groups here do struggle with uh, the issue of insurance. What is quite good is that if uh, repair cafes are held in community centres in Victoria that have uh, insurance through the state government, uh, that's really broad and that covers them entirely and we can just sign in, sign out, and we're covered. Other, uh, other uh, groups might have to be auspiced to receive insurance through the auspicer. Um, most councils don't really like to get involved because they don't want to insure um, for, for repair cafes we've found. They prefer that you're an incorporated group uh, and that you seek insurance through your own means. They don't seem to want to support um, groups um, directly. Um, so, that, you know, that, that has been an issue with us when we've approached council to actually have uh, repair cafes in, in, in a repair cafe in the local library. We did that in 2017. Um, we thought, oh, it'd be great in our local area to do uh, a repair cafe in the library it probably would have been the first in Australia um, and they said no uh, again not probably related they didn't say really why but probably related to risk again uh, very risk adverse and looks like everybody um, has has that sort of uh, issue with uh, with council and uh, bureau bureaucrats and red tape so uh, yeah, that was a bit disappointing because libraries around the world now are um, embracing community repair and uh, repair cafes, which you know we know about, we read about. So we continue with our campaigning locally uh, since 2012, but for 10 years, we haven't had any success. 
And we support, we think that that might be now, you know, they're sort of over us. They're sort of a bit like, you know, you've been sort of doing this forever and a day and uh, we're just ignoring you now. Um, and, and look, maybe if they did it, they'd have egg on their face <laughs> because, because uh, we tried so hard and then they accept, accept us like saying, oh, okay, you can do it now. I don't think they'd probably want to, uh, to give us that uh, satisfaction. That's, uh, that's uh, unfortunate because our community is missing out. But we keep trying for our community. And maybe some, somebody in our community will, uh, will uh, step up uh, when, when we leave our community, <laughs> which mightn't be too far in the future. It's also been um, my experience too is that um, there's a lot of people that um, haven't got the skills but they still want to do something and it's I think it's the world over that they, they'll come down and just volunteer and that's another really good aspect of uh, what we do and it's uh, it's one thing that that you can do, but you also need that support. You also need that support from um, all these other people that will check people in, guide them around, sit them at tables, and uh, and and also the um, most people that come in uh, really interested. We we haven't had too many, I suppose. Um, Karen and I talk about the the users, I suppose. Uh, and what I mean by that, and I don't mean to offend anyone, but they sort of take it for granted. Oh, I've got eight things. And if you're not very well organised, you'll find that there's <laughs> someone smiling. <laughs> They've got four fixes working on, the, on all their stuff and there's a queue. So, yes. That's... <laughs> That's why you really do need the uh, the organisers. How valuable are they? So it's not just the repairers, it's the organisers. Uh, and uh, it takes skill to be able to, you know, manage those sort of situations. Even with textiles, you know, it's just simple repair. But in my situation, I've had, you know, people expecting you to upcycle three or four garments uh, in a in a 20 minute sort do of fittings, <laughs> do fittings and do actual fittings um so if you don't have the organizers uh on the ball at that front desk and then the roving person that goes around um you can be uh you can be railroaded um so that's that's very interesting uh that they're, they're our experiences uh with uh, the many many repair cafes that uh, we've, we've attended and you could write a book <laughs> about about all the all the experiences and maybe one day uh, when I've stopped all my uh, activism we're on Twitter and that's where we campaign and uh, are quite uh, quite vocal in relation to uh, right to repair and uh, and repair in general so if anyone is interested to see our work there, it's uh, it's a daily labour of love to be. Uh, we, we our hashtag is Voices for Repair, but we also hashtag Right to Repair, and you know we're relentless. We we keep at it. It's it's the it's something we can do as uh, as two people. We're not incorporated. We're not an organisation. Um, this is uh, this is completely separate uh, to um, to to everything. Um, that, uh, but it's so important, so very, very important. And to have that network, like yourself, Brigitte, um, to have the network of people like the Ann Wiseman, the Australian Repair Network, um, people in um, like Nathan Proctor and Aaron Persanowski in, in the States, Kyle Wines from iFixit, Lewis Rosman, uh, the YouTuber, very, very important to uh, to keep in touch with those people. The UK, the Restart Project, Right to Repair Europe, uh, those people are invaluable to um, pushing the, 
the right to repair forward across the globe. It's not just us um, campaigning for Australian right to repair. We're so supportive of global right to repair as well. Yes, and we've always, um, we, we always push back, uh, especially when um, Karen sees anything in the, in the paper there, and we, we, we think it's a bit of greenwashing going on. Uh, we yell pretty loud when um, things like that come out, like especially so-called Apple's um, repair rule, iPhone 14, you know, it's not repair rule, might be easy to pull apart, but you're uh, getting bits and pieces and everything serialised, so you just can't do that. Uh, and whether it's uh, uh, you're pulling apart a, a toaster or a kettle, the same thing. We'll, we'll call out, um, we called out SMEG the other week when they, their toaster failed again. This woman had, what, three? In, or... Yeah, three, uh, she's, she's onto a third SMEG toaster in a couple of years and SMEG toasters are very expensive. Um, so we'll, we'll call out uh, the companies as well. We tag, tag the companies in. We're not afraid to do that. Um, Recycling, uh, Victoria here, uh, the state that we're in is uh, big on uh, recycling, but uh, little and 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 you know the rhetoric around the um, circular economy and all it is is recycling. We uh, we call that out. We want to see repair and uh, reuse um, of uh, of items. Um, and, and repair and reuse facilities in Victoria that they, they have vision, but uh, has, haven't um, eventuated. Um, funding for recycling is, seems to be getting, um, uh, is just continuing funding for more recycling. And uh, that's not where we see the circular economy going in our work, yeah, it's, making um, a difference. Yeah, it's like a, it's missing these two other cogs in the wheel. They just do the recycling and they expect to advance down the track, but all they're doing is the same old, same old. You've got to introduce those other two aspects of repair and reuse, and maybe they'll get where they need to go, but at the minute, all their funding just goes to recycling. If, because uh, I know we're probably short of time, if uh, people want to follow our actual repairs, uh, we're on Instagram and I know you follow uh, Brigitte, uh, we follow you on Instagram. Uh, that's what we do basically at home. Um, we're always, well, every day we're repairing something. So if people are interested in that practical at home, tinkering, fixing, uh, please, uh, we're uh, Mend It Aussie on uh, Instagram. We're Mend It Aussie on Twitter for the campaigning right to repair. And we're on Facebook. And that's just basically where we go to repair, when we go to repair cafes. Or, you know, if we can, promoting other repair cafes, our friends that run um, other repair cafes. If that pops up, we'll share it on Facebook. So that's more event, event related. And um, we also run the Facebook page Right to Repair Australia. And that started off with just us two. And in a couple of years, we've got oh, nearly 700, I think, people following that. So that's Right to Repair Australia on Facebook. And that's just a collation of, uh, of articles and videos uh, related to right, right to Repair from across the world. Um, uh, so there's that and um, yeah. Bravo, this is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, you dedicated a whole de decade, you know, to this uh, work, you know, and, and, and look what you've achieved, it's incredible. Yeah, so commendable. I mean, I'm just so impressed. It's wonderful. And you seem to be traveling repairers, you know, across this huge country of Australia. And just, yeah, it's just so inspiring, incredible. I mean, really like to applaud you. And I hope that uh, maybe uh, some of the participants, you can also use your reaction function to um, 
applaud like I'm doing or getting really excited it's something that's all love <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's wow lovely. this is amazing <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's lovely yeah and it's it's just um it means uh, a lot to us thank you and uh being invited to speak at fix fest by James uh we're very honored and privileged we thank James for the opportunity to share what we do and um, our message is you know we are stronger in numbers rather yes. than working in silos and that's why it's so important that this movement is global uh, that we have our trans-Tasman partnership a bit closer to home, which we've already established, and, and, and that's, that's great. Uh, but we also need to consider everybody else and supporting everybody else uh, in, in our push to, uh, to legislate full right to repair. But also, you know, we're, we're really active grandparents and uh, we have Crafternoons with the children and we, we, um, we share those on Instagram and uh, on Facebook uh, to show that we're also um, trying to instill uh, repair, the notion of repair in our children. That's really important, uh, important to us too. Um, and we're getting some successes there, even with our own family, who might have been a bit more throwaway, disposable. They're also coming to us now saying, can you fix this? Can you fix that? We're uh, quite, uh, quite busy uh, doing those things as well with family. And if you can influence just family or one, one other person outside your family about repair, that's pretty amazing. I didn't understand that. Oopsie-doo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> couldn't agree more. That's wonderful. And we will see you at uh, International Repair Day. And I'm um, also, yes. uh, you know, we'll extend the invitation to perhaps for you to present at our online conference, if you like. So oh, that's oh, thank you. That would be oh. amazing. Mm. Oh, yes. We'd, we'd, you know, love to do that. Thank, thank you for the great. invite. And we're certainly yes. coming. Uh, you knew that, didn't you? That yes. Yes. Yeah, we're yeah. booked in. We're booked That's in. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, we were just happy to see what was happening. But well, we're extra happy to maybe present and chat about what we do. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. you too. And, and lovely and to you. Um, meet you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank you to all the people who have listened to our story. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye now, Kakite. Bye. <laughs>